Anak, pag na mo yung lote na daddy mo, gusto mo pumalik dito, balik ka lang anytime. Of course, lutuan, man. Lutuan yeah. kita ng gusto mong lote. Filipino food. Of course, that. Uh, thank you, man. Libre po masa. <laughs> free, free fair. Is a fair free? <laughs> there are very few moments when the stars align and everything you've been preparing for your whole life meets that opportunity of a lifetime. Filipino food has always been important to me, but when I moved to LA, that's when I found out that it's really what defines me. Very few people get the opportunity to showcase their cuisine on a show like MasterChef. But to showcase that one dish your parents taught you is extra special. Ako si Raup Tegala, anak ng mga magulang kong OFWs. At ang mas mahalaga, isang anak ng Pilipinas. What's up, boss? Hey, what's up, dude? How's it going, guys? I'm doing good. How are y'all? What's up, Charlie? What's up, Kisa? He runs. You got so much hair, too? Dude, yeah. how's it going, kid? Long time to see you guys. Hi. Bro. What's up with you, bro? Chilling, bro. How are you, like, man? Man, you know, man. Just trying to keep it going. You know, That's how the leg is up, bro. <laughs> Let's see what you got today. What do we got? What do we have? Pancakes and then the uh, sea log. What do I want? Let's see. Yep, everything on it. What's up, Laura? I'm gonna give you a big, you know, good steamy fan. So this is Field Market at the Manila District. We feature. Filipino small businesses exclusively, right? Filipino food, Filipino goods. We got the barbecue, we got the desserts, we got the products like candles, t-shirts. We got indoor plants, indoor merch, and all of it is an incubation of Filipino small yep. businesses here in LA. It's dope. I think it's like mom and pop stores that come through. I mean, you definitely feel the community around here, man. Yeah. I smell the barbecue. That shit sounds good. Yeah, no, it's a vibe every Sunday. You know, people always say you eat with your eyes first. Yeah. But I, I feel like for me, having that, that smell, that certain smell, or that you like certain noise that you hear. Yeah. And it's like people gathering. You know, you hear like a sizzling plate. You smell like garlic and onions and adobo. Like, yeah, and you smell like pork barbecue hitting a charcoal grill. Here at the Field Market, we're we're bringing back the nostalgia for all the people that, that grew up with that. And yet we're setting up nostalgia for the future generations that come in here and they're like, oh yeah, yeah, I've been to the field market, it's awesome. Like I've never been to something like that. And you know, as it goes on, people will be like, oh yeah, there's something like the field market. It's, it's establishing this yep. for every kind of generation. You know, so that you had those memories. So we're trying to make those memories for everyone else. I remember as a kid, like we'd roll up to these kind of like lots where People pop up, do like Filipino barbecue, yeah. like fish balls, yeah. or like you know sumai, which is like the delicate rice cakes, mm -hmm. and it, it has that certain memory. And then you know, when I go to field market or places like these, like I get that deja vu or that nostalgia just hits and like yeah, takes it me back to the Philippines. Like you're at a family barbecue. Yeah, you walk in and all of a sudden you feel like you're at your tita's backyard yep. or your friend's tita's backyard, right? Trying to feel for the very first time. I remember growing up, um, my dad had this like travel agency, and right across from the travel agency was a small Filipino place where they they pull out the grill, small charcoal grill, and yeah. grill barbecue <laughs> sticks for a dollar. And it's like that's really what this is to me. When we have like Taste of the Pacific doing it out here, it's like that brings it back. Exactly. That experience, I want everyone who comes out to the field market to experience Filipino food like that. Our generation, we grew up watching our aunts, our lolas yeah. like cook for us. But this generation, like having this exposure in a different country, really just adds to upholding that and make sure that it gets passed on to the next generation. Where do you see this kind of like leading up to? We'd love to see a Manila district in, in every city. The Filipino culture deserves to be in the mainstream just as much as the Mexican culture, Japanese, and, and all that here yep. in LA, especially, I mean, Filipinos are the first Asians to ever enter America. It's kind of a big deal. Yeah. So why aren't we mainstream? Well, we're not really encouraging Filipino enterprise as much as we should or could. So I feel like Field Market at the Manila District is kind of that first foray into doing that. This market is a representation of the culture itself. Filipino food is an experience, right? It's, it's the Filipino culture is, is people together sharing a meal. The Field Market is really gives that chance to a lot of our vendors. 
a lot of our vendors have the, the opportunity to really show face of the people behind the products that give you that experience of why Filipino food is the next thing. Bars, motherfucker. We, <laughs> that, I mean, that's why we do this. We, we give, we're here to give the opportunities for everyone here yep. who is like a first generation, like American, and give the opportunity for first generation and, and Americans all over this experience that you can't get like, exactly unless you go to the Philippines or you grew up in a Filipino household. Having something like this really uplifts the community. Yeah, I think so. And I feel like every Sunday it's always a vibe. You know, people come yeah. through, Filipinos come through, people who don't know Filipino food come through. And I see lots of conversation happening amongst the patrons that yeah. come. And Usually in cultures, it's your language. Yeah. Even if you're in America, it's your language that kind of keeps you guys together, but our generation is probably the last generation to really speak yeah. or understand Tagalog. You may lose Tagalog, but there's always a language, I think, in the Filipino exactly. culture that will all be forever, and that's food. That's our love language. Yeah, right? our love language is and that food. Will always, yeah. That will stay forever, because that's the one yep. thing that we can't lose, yeah. right? The, the most important language in Filipino is the food. Yep. You guys, we uplift that, we share it, um, that's why it's important for us. I think Filipino food, and also our, our people in general, it, it's always the measure of strength is how strong the community is. Yeah. And you guys are definitely putting forth, you know, a community that is, is gonna be prospering in the future. And I can't wait to see where it goes, man. So appreciate it, brother, man. Hey, let's go. Yo, man, good to see you again, bro. Always a pleasure. Hi-Fi has been almost like a second home since moving to LA, and every time I miss my family, I always you know, drop by, say what's up to you, Arnold and the Hi-Fi Kitchen staff. Having that second family in LA gives me the privilege or, or gives me the time like, not to feel homesick. What made you want to cook Filipino food? Cooking in general was always just like a creative outlet um, I was always real creative growing up, as you know. Being in Hi-Fi, it's in the middle of Koreatown, and then like Little Tokyo, and then Little Armenia, and then like Mexican food all over. You know, it was always just real easy to like cross-reference the flavors, you know? And so it would just be something creative, something cool to just be like, yo, you know, like, bulgogi will be good in tacos you know what i mean like it's just something like easy right like that you just think about growing up here our recognition of like the uh the, the cultural enclave that was like given to us in yeah. los angeles i didn't see anything happening moving forward yeah. and so me being an adult it was exactly the same how come when i go to little tokyo it looks like little tokyo how come i go i go to koreatown i know i'm koreatown but yeah. When I go to historic Filipino town, when I come home, why don't I know when I get in and when I leave Filipino yeah. town? You know, that's why we opened Hi-Fi Kitchen. That's why we named it after the neighborhood. So like, if people were to come here, they know like- They're they historic to Filipino exactly, town. Exactly, exactly. There's not a week that goes by that people are just like, they see the sign and they're just like, oh, Hi-Fi, historic Filipino town. I didn't know that that's what it stood for. Yeah. And like, that's literally what I'm here for. Yeah. Like, what better way to have a conversation yeah. over food? It's something powerful about sharing food. I grew up in Houston where it's like, I grew up with a lot of people that were from different cultures. And it, it was weird for me because Tagalog was my main language coming into America. I found out like in the States, sharing food is the best way to really absorb somebody else's culture. When you're cooking Filipino food in the neighborhood that you grew up in, it's almost like you're, you're passing on like that legacy. You know, I don't speak Tagalog, yeah. but I know how to speak through my food exactly. you know what i mean and that's always been like a point to make you know it's just a, a way to share culture a way to communicate um your upbringing right um and a way to honor your parents legacy right your parents came out our parents came out straight from a different country life, yeah. right from a different country spoke a different language didn't even know, my mom landed in, in, in Ohio, bro. She didn't know where she was going, dude. Yeah. She was just like, all right, cool, it's in America. Yeah, it's America, you know, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? 
And that's crazy. And she, that's like mad gritty. She used to make like adobo with like with like gizzards and like chicken feet and shit because they would just give, just give that shit for free. Yeah. Like at the market because like people didn't eat that. Sharing my heritage through food, um, even you know, be it through the restaurant or wherever, is really just honoring like her hustle. Yeah, man. And my, and my dad's hustle, just like honoring their legacy and going beyond their like wildest dreams. Like you know, like their dream was just to come here for a better life, yep. more opportunity. And in, it, like, now it's my responsibility to be like, all right, make like, sure you wanted me to have opportunity, <laughs> I'm gonna make that shit happen because yeah. like, this is what you came out here for. Cause, yeah. you, cause you could just sit pretty back in the back at home. Yeah. You know, like they, they could have done their thing back at home, no problem, you know? Yeah. Having that courageous jump. I think a lot of immigrants and a lot of, you know, especially Filipino Americans, that's a, that's a common story of their parents going to America, going to a different country. My parents went to Saudi Arabia before they went to the United States to pursue something. And then it's like, you know, our generation, it's kind of like we're, we're halfway through that bridge because they had to cross that bridge. But then like sometimes we never took that bridge back to our country. In our lifetime, we're never gonna have to have that type of sacrifice. Yeah, if we waste the opportunity that we are given just from our parents giving us that then maybe we lose. That's a sacrifice. We lose our culture, we lose our roots, we lose our language, yeah. and we can't lose that. It takes a lot for someone to a straight move from their home country yep. to go to a different country. Uh, I lost like my grandparents, I've lost like most of my aunts. I used to cook for me when I was a little kid. And those memories of them like inviting me to the kitchen and just like showing me how to make a dish, there, nothing was ever written down. You just had to be like, you just had to be there. You had to like, you literally had to be there to find that recipe because that recipe was passed on to like, you know, through the heart, bro. Like sometimes you just have to know when a certain dish is like almost done. How do you have to know how much to season it to get it to that, you know, to the apex of where that dish is going to be served at. You're watching like the timing, like you have to watch the feel. How do they feel yeah, about like add the, the next thing, Exactly, right? exactly, exactly. Yeah, how big is the pinch of salt? Who are some family members or relatives you'd say had a pretty big impact in the way that you cook or some of the recipes that you have? My grandma was the biggest one. She was the provider. She just she cooked for everybody. Made the best pancakes. And then um, and then she passed. I was like 12. And then um, who took the mantle was like my aunt. A lot of the, their recipes are the ones that we use here or at least inspired by. My Tita Vine. Best synagogue, you know what I mean? Um, best spaghetti, yeah. you know, tita nene, like pork adobo, like, you know, like th those are the two that, that, that hold it down in the kitchen for the whole family, you know? And we run pretty deep, dude, like maybe like almost like 30, 30. you know? Yeah, like every, every time we get together for family parties and stuff. Hopefully we can like carry on at least a similar pl flavor profile yeah. to like to you know what they gave us because they're you know they're straight from home you know what I mean yeah. they they know they have a reference point you know our reference point is them Filipino food is very special man and to have you like I said like the mantle being passed down to you in Hi-Fi you're a big part of why this community is thriving why historic Filipino town is historic Filipino town. And yo, we're gonna see you kill this shit. A priest, uh, man. Yeah, dude. Thank you for uh, thank you for always being really uh, generous hey, of your time. For that, uh, lying, though. The lie. <laughs> What made you want to cook like Filipino food in LA in general? I initially didn't. I mean, my, <laughs> yeah, yeah. my gut reaction was to 
give the people what they want, whatever they wanted to, to have in each community and what was in demand. Yeah. Do those, you know, demographics and read charts, understand spreadsheets, and see where the wind's blowing. Um, yeah. But it wasn't until uh, my wife just sat me down and just said, you know, hey, look in the mirror. Like, think really hard about what uh, you want to do in terms of representation and, and understanding what is actually needed exactly. on a grander scale. I've always been a fan of Filipino food. I've never made it for career purposes or for business purposes um, a, a production. And uh, there wasn't, at that time, um, many new school establishments that were putting themselves out there. Yeah, they had like uh, geared towards like traditional Filipino food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of the, the goings on was basically out in New York with Nicole and uh, Jeep Nia Maharlika. That momentum with uh, newer Filipino restaurants opening up uh, because of their, their courage. Even as a consumer and fan, when I, when I went to Maharlika, it was like 2012 or something. It was like it was in college. It was it was so good because there was always a question and also a, a phrase of people saying, "Filipino food's the next big thing." The conversation was just like forever, but then everybody, I think, you know, my year I was like Anthony Bourdain, like they always like, "Oh, Filipino food is amazing already." Like it's not on the come up. It's like it's just amazing. Um, but I think what's even better now, or what I love is like chefs, home cooks, or even like you know. The, the, the traditional toro toros, it's more like we're not fighting to be the next big thing anymore. We're like, yo, this is our food, and it's always been important to us. Please have it, right? Where would you say your early experience in Filipino food started, whether it's like home or in Manila? Going back to uh, the restaurants and what we had at Tatan, it's yeah. just uh, we wanted to reflect why and how those items at the restaurant became to be. Um, starting with our logo, and that's exactly why you see the 16 leaves representing the 16 children yeah. of uh, my grandfather. It was always someone's something <laughs> growing up. It was a birthday, it was a wedding, it was a funeral, whatever it was, someone was cooking something and sharing a recipe and uh, um, giving those kinds of experiences of how to basically feed your family. When I look back to like the last couple of years and I think of like who I've been so blessed to just kind of watch in the kitchen and learn. It was like my aunt from my dad's side, Tita Malou, my dad, of course my mom, and also even my grandma. My grandma would like make like this uh, homemade like suman and but she would she would start off with like the raw rice, like unprocessed rice, you know, they, they didn't touch the mill. She would like manually get the grains like I think polished, you know, is a term for it. Um, like, who would you say are some people that passed on recipes to you? Primarily my grandfather, Tatan. Yeah. He's the one that actually um, raised me here in the United States in terms of a father figure. And uh, he um, passed on a lot of those recipes to his children. Oh, dope, yeah. So, each one of those 16 children had their own interpretation of what or how to make any particular dish. One of the, like what do you call this, early like cooks in my, in my life that cooked a lot of dishes or I just watched was of course my dad, right? Like every, like every morning or during like, you know, if we had like lunch or weekends we had family over, like he would cook everything, like you know, from, all the way from dinuguan to like a fish dish or like, you know, Tortang talong for breakfast. What's yeah. the wildest thing you saw as a kid being nosy around the kitchen? Oh, bro, I've seen it a... wasn't even the kitchen, it was the goat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was traumatic as a kid. I've mean, seen that shit, yeah, but it's also. Like third grade. Yeah, but it was like a rite of passage. You were like, if you're gonna eat food, make sure you don't waste it. You gotta know where it came from. It Absolutely. came from like land, and it's like, uh, the exposure is great. The seasick dish that you had was crazy. I thought it was like pork belly, I thought it was a mixture, but then I remember when you told me it was all just chicken. Like the, the textural like notes of it hit. And I was like, this like this is chicken. Like, you know, the crispiness, but you had the little bit of a, you know, like you need a little bit of gelatinous too. Then like the, the actual 
like pork lemon, and it was mind blowing. So I'm gonna give it a try with uh, some eggplants today, with some ganili. I still think like char grilling your eggplants the best taste. So I'm gonna do this, do the first layers like onions and garlic. When I think about recipes in the Filipino culture, a lot of them are not passed down the recipe books. It's not like French food where it's like, yeah, you have the recipes already there. And a lot of cuisines, like they, they have recipe books like, except for that. And for us, it's like, if your aunt didn't pass it down to you, your parent, your Lola, your Lola didn't pass it down, it's like, you had to go ask somebody. You had to watch somebody make it. One of my biggest fears is that like some of the recipes from my mom's side and dad's side, like from the province side, is gonna get lost um, over time. It's like nobody's gonna know how to make that specific dish, right? I'm adding the, the ganiling now. I actually tried making a vegetarian version of this with just the eggplant and then like maybe a little bit of mushrooms. Didn't, didn't have the right kind of. Umami? Yeah, you have the right, it was missing something. I've been trying out using dark soy sauce for this recipe just because it kind of hides the eggplant. So it, it, the eggplant looks more like the, the pig ears. And also it's not, as, it's not as salty. I find it like not as salty as regular soy sauce. What the fuck was that? <laughs> Babe. She sneezed. <laughs> I thought somebody farted. I was like, what the? Do you usually use dark soy sauce? No, I, I, I prefer using regular soy sauce. My dad started using dark soy sauce for the coloring. And always add a little bit of mayo in there. Putting lemon in there just for some acidity. If you smell like the garlic and onions, like, you know it's in the Filipino dish. All right, and that's it right there. That should look good, bro. Yeah, chef, please do be the honors, man. Just like a bowl. It should be good. We're good. So we have the, of course, the classic Pante Canton. It's marinated in chicken stock, soy sauce, calamansi, and then we're gonna use that as the base. Then we're gonna have chicken, shrimp on top, and all classic veggies. And pop-ups are very stressful, but the thing is like, you just gotta prep ahead of time, and then kind of like vision and visionize all the plates, so that when it all comes out, you know, it's all gonna be good. Hey guys, good evening. I know I haven't met some of y'all, but my name is Ralph Digala. Let me see, I love Filipino food, man. My parents are here. My parents have been cooking uh, Filipino food like my whole entire life, right? And I remember one of the first few dishes that my dad taught me how to cook was pancit. And um, it was crazy. You cook pancit your whole life, and then you get an opportunity of a lifetime to cook in front of like Gordon Ramsay. And the dish that you present is pancit, the OG Filipino dish, and you get an apron. Okay. Yeah, you'll be here. Huh? Oh, slice muna yung onion, chaka garlic. Sibuyas, chaka garlic. A lot of garlic or no? Salam. Yeah, we're cooking only one. Mainit na to. Lalagay na yung garlic. And onion. I like the garlic. Smaller. Yeah. So saute. Of 
Where you learn how to cook punche, Dad? From Lolo and Lola. Look at Munanjar like a knock. Yeah. There you go. Well, you want me to peel the shrimp? Yeah. Well, I'll get my name done. Okay, I'm gonna have Yeah, what's beans. next? The beans. The beans? Beans. Okay, I'm gonna have beans. What kind of beans are these? It's the string beans. No beans. Uh, string beans, baggy beans, a little bit in Manila. Yeah. Well, how old were you when you uh, first got punched that? I was just three years old. Fifth grade. Fifth grade? Yeah. How helped Lola? Yeah. Like I'm on carrots and the, the sweet beans. Hot, you're used to, man. This is a little bit of stock. A lot of times, I mean, that happens. Look at some. Or do you need salt or the stuff? No need for the salt, just the black pepper. Shrimp. What's your favorite uh, pancit, Dad? This one, sotanghon. I prefer sotanghon than uh, banton. Banton. So I'm gonna stop. More. Okay. A little bit sweet, sweet, sweet. No, this is enough. Yeah. Yeah, we'll take out just a whole. How come you don't just mix it in? If you mix it, I, sometimes you cannot, uh, the vegetable will be overcooked. So, my technique, I just do like this. Yeah. Sahog first and then, then after that will boil the, the stock. That's what I did on Master Chef too. Mm. Okay, now put the stock now in. Right? Yeah, put it. I usually put uh, soy sauce in this so that para manu na yung ano sutanghon magsok siya ng ano the flavor yeah yeah sometimes the uh, sutanghon doesn't have any flavor yeah now we wait for boil yeah here let me get some water make it boil pag kumulo na siya lagay na yung sutanghon yeah tinitimpla ko na ito para mag Sip yung flavor dito sa sotanghon. Yeah. Now we'll put down the sotanghon. Wow, we. Nice good end up. Should be good. What, what are we doing now? Make it dry. Mm. So the sotanghon so soaks the sabaw. Yeah. When did you move to Saudi, Dad? Oh, it was in 1992 up to 1998. I was there in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Because you were, you were already working, right, as a nurse? Yes. Who cooked the, the best pancit in Saudi? Of course, me. <laughs> no, actually, I learned all the, most of my cooking. Yeah. With your uh, cousin, Rudy. Yeah, he, he was the chef, one of the restaurants, in, I mean, one of the hotel in Philippines, the Philippine Plaza. I'll put now the... Yes, I hope. Yeah. And we're done. You still remember when we first moved here to the United States? I think, think it was April. It was raining. Mom had what mom was still in Saudi. So wow, that's a while. That's all. It's a long time coming. Ready to eat. Okay, that's just punch it.
What do you think? Sarap na po niya. No. It's not dry. Yeah. So the horn is like moist. What do you think? Um, what do you think is important to cook Filipino food? At, uh, in Saudi or here, when you have a different country, you cook Filipino food. What do you feel like? <laughs> he's, a, he's like, I was here no more, dude. Who taught you the this closest style for making this pan set? I learned this one when I was still young because I used to go with my uncle who used to cook. Like if there's some fiesta, kung may fiesta, pang padasal, then I am observing them how how they cook. So that's the way I learned. Did they give you a recipe or just? No, oh, I'm just watching learning, them. watching them, right? You learn yeah. them. You know, in uh, sa probinsya, hindi nagano yung mga ano ng cook ng mga ano dun ng recipe kung ano ano lang nila nagay. Mm -hmm. So, but they really cook good. You know, you don't have a list of recipes, but. You have to know when to adjust it, yeah. when to add the next vegetable. How do you usually know when your punch is done? You can see this in the sutangon, niya, it's already clear. Yeah. Then the noodles is already clear, that means it's already cooked. Because if, if you overcook the sutangon, it will be gummy. Nak, how is Eliana? How about the Filipino food there? Do you enjoy the, the Filipino food over there in LA? Yeah, it's, it's really good. I cook a lot more Filipino food now because I miss home. Mm -hmm. I miss the home cooking, you know, but uh, the Filipino food there is also amazing. They, you know, a lot of a lot of the people my age, they're cooking more of the food. It kind of makes them remember like their parents, their grandparents, and also we're just prideful. Filipino food is always good, and it's uh, it's important to us, obviously, because you know, always was makes us remember. It's kind of like when you were in Saudi. You remember in Saudi when you could have, you know, of course, Mediterranean food, shawarmas, and like that, but. Whenever you got together, I remember as a kid, everybody would always cook Filipino food. Instead of being homesick, you just cook Filipino food and... Uh, you miss it. Yeah, you miss it. Nah. Yeah. How's the Papa Pinelli? How was, how was your life there? It's so, good, man, yeah. You, do you know, you're, you're the one cooking now, all the <laughs> Filipino food, huh? Yeah. I feel like, whenever I get homesick, I just cook Filipino food. It reminds me of back home, you know? It's like, uh, but we're, yeah, we're pushing... We're, we're presenting Filipino food to a lot of the people, showing them like the dishes that we ate growing up, right? Pancit's the, everybody knows pancit, but then like, you know, we try to share like kare kare, ginatan, you know, Beagle Express. Anak, mayroong ka bang mga kaibigan sa LA na nagluluto din ng Filipino food kasamaan mo? One of the chefs there, Chef JR from Tatangs, my friend Justin from, or he has a restaurant too, Hi-Fi Kitchen. A lot more. Cooking the Filipino food makes us proud. And also we're trying to, we're just trying to cook all the, the food that our parents cook so that we make sure we pass it on to the next generation. You know, it's like, not, not only does it make us or gives us a memory of home, but we feel like we're preserving home. Some of the stuff is gone, like you said. Some of the recipes from even the chefs growing up that you work with, you know, lots of like recipe lists. Mm -hmm. So you just have to know how to cook it. So now we're cooking it, we're trying to recollect how our parents made it in the kitchen. So it's it's really good. Anak, yeah. Pag na miss mo yung luto ng daddy mo, gusto mo pumalik dito, balik ka lang anytime. Of course, luto ang, man, luto yeah. Luto ang gusto mong luto, Filipino food. Of course, Dad, thank you, man. Libre po sa Free, free fair. Is a fair free? <laughs> okay. It's always, um, a blessing when you're joined with friends and family for a salo salo. A feast is how we celebrate important events in life, celebration. People always ask me who I am. It's always a continuing journey to answer that question, but I know there's always one constant, and that's I'm a Filipino that loves Filipino food, right? Um, I'm a proud Filipino. I'm a proud son of two Filipinos, and I share one thing with people in this room right now. There's no better privilege in the world to be like son and daughter of the Philippines.